the the last part here it's about the comparison or the relation and other words between the tpo retransmit and the hark maximum hark retransmission okay what is the relation between both of them but let's first tell me to tell you usually the vendors is doing this tpo retransmit as a dynamic way so they are increasing dynamically yes you have a start value but usually it's like dynamic but anyway let me explain what we have so here we assume that we have uh, this one here I'm assuming that the maximum hark time is required 40 milliseconds for the hark transmission. Okay, 40 milliseconds. And the first example here, I'm assuming that t ball retransmit is set at 30 milliseconds. As we highlighted before, t ball retransmit will start once the, the receiver sent a feedback with pulpit one requesting the, the UE to send or the receiver to send the feedback about that part. So now let's take it one by one to try to see what we have. So as you know, the first sequence number zero is being sent with pulpit equal number one from the RLC uh, layer for the transmitter side to the MAC layer at the also the that is still at the Junibi side. So here, the 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 T-body transmit, which is this timer, started, which is starting from here, ending here, at 30 milliseconds. So now, what will happen? Sequence number zero is being sent from the Junib Mac to the receiver Mac at the UE side. Okay, through the air interface. So that's being received here as sequence number zero. So somehow this packet is being lost. Sequence number zero. So what will happen? The Mac layer will try to recover the data before going to the RLC retransmission. So you have maximum number of, of, of hard will be trying to do it. Here we have here the first hard retransmission being done at the one. Then it was failed. Uh, failed. Then again, second one being retransmitted again. Then the timer of the tipo retransmitted was being expired here before receiving the maximum number of hard. For example, assume you have here three maximum hard retransmission. One, two, three. All of them, the first two was being failed. So what will happen since this time expired before the hard completed the complete hard process? The RLC will be requesting sending here the, directly after the expiry a new RLC sequence with the transmission for the RLC from the RLC side. So this will interrupt the hard processes here. Okay. So now assume now assume now you extended the timer for the T-body transmit to become as 50 milliseconds. So instead of expiring here, it will be expiring in the bottom uh, down here. So this will be start and end point. So in this case, you will allow the third hark to be completed, which is that, that part. So in this case, here, the retransmission will be successfully and this data was being transferred successfully from the Mac RLC to here. So in this case, there is an acknowledgement. So you don't need again to do to go to the second RLC retransmission because the hark already recovered that part. So the takeaway from here, that the T-board retransmit should be greater than the Mac retransmission time round trip time to ensure the hard time is not being interrupted the hard transmission is not being interrupted by the RLC and the T-ball should ensure that all the hard processes is doing taking effect. This is that's it that's all about the RLC retransmission. Okay this very long example is just showing you what is the relation between the theory assembly and the hard retransmission. Theory assembly as we highlighted in the previous section it's working in the RLC receiver uh, or the receiver as a, in the receiver side of during the RLC uh, part usually during the segmentation. HARP is the layer after during the HARP transmission work will happen. So what is the relation between both of them? So I give an example in texting here. You can just put it from the left side here. And this is a visualized example, okay? So let now let me explain what we have. So in this example, I'm, I'm giving two examples. The first one, I'm assuming the theory assembly is less than the HARP time. And the second one, I'm assuming the theory assembly is greater than or equal to the HARP time. So let's zoom in the first example first here. So in this example, as you can see, I am I'm, I'm, I'm dividing this into two parts here, and we have a color code on the top uh, side here. We have the RLC layer and we have the MAC layer. So I'm assuming here here you have once one packet being segmented, as you can see, into four packets. Okay, so we have sequence number one being segmented into four packets, being segmented, and green color means received. This color means it's lost. This color, uh, this color red means there is a hard key transmission. So we have the RLC layer and MAC layer. So assuming now at the RLC side, the first bucket sequence number one, which is having segment information one zero, segment information one zero means this is the first segmented packet being received at the RLC. So directly the tier assembly will be started once we have this packet being received. Then within the timer, this is expiry. This is the timer will be expired here. This is the duration of this timer. Within the timer, the 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 the, the receiver received sequence one zero one one. Then directly he received one zero, and he was expecting to receive still one packet in between here, but he didn't receive it. He received the last one here. 
okay he's found that the bytes it's not following the sequence so here what will happen during that time the hark will try this packet might be lost in the air interface so there will be a hark transmission so assume now your hark your maximum hark transmission is eight okay and assume this is the time which takes for the hark transmission just for for this is might be started here by the way but assume you have a maximum hark retransmission so the first one was failed second one was failed. failed you have eight attempt third was failed fourth was failed fifth until seven was all failed just num at number eight this was being successfully uh, uh, received and it was being able by the hark to to uh, successfully recover this data so it will now send the, this one with the missing information to request number one which was being lost here so to be resending here but unfortunately it's being sent after the reassembly timer being expired this means the hark was being unuseless in this case because already once this timer is expired the rlc retransmission will start because the rlc or receiver will be sending i didn't receive that what for the transmitter please return them again so that's the case so in this case what will happen once you receive that this means this is useless because it's coming out of the reassembly this means the RLC uh, receiver already sent to the transmitter telling him I didn't receive from the RLC perspective because these are transmitted again. Now let's go to the second example, which is the, the bottom down here. Assume the reassembly timer is greater than the hard time. So assume the hard time is, is here or whatever. Okay. And now the same example, this one was being lost. And as you can see, RLC sigma, this one being lost initially then it was being sent here for the receiver since he received it here this means he will recover he will be able to recover the lost one because the heart was being able to successfully decode this data so this is the main idea that whenever you do whenever for example assume that you have a plan in the network to extend the maximum heart retransmission from 8 to 16 because i think in 5g is supporting up to 16 so and assume the time the time of the hark around trip time for the dnr for example is eight milliseconds so this require you need uh, 16 multiplied by eight this would be your timer for the assembly minimum time for assembly to be able to wait for the recovery from the hark maximum hark transmission and they have give some written example in the left figure here so in this case you need to ensure that the reassembly is at least greater than or equal to the hark try Try to make it at least slightly because again, if you extend it, uh, you have a very large value or very yeah, long value. This also can uh, result in a very de a long delay if you keep waiting uh, for longer time and you didn't allow the RSC to take the retransmission. This can also increase the delay, so you need to be very careful whenever you tune this particular timer. And one important point to highlight for this is for the AM mode, for the UM mode, for example, you're using voice over an R or Volti. Usually, this timer is set for very high uh, value because at the end, uh, in the uh, UM mode, we don't have a received transmission, right? So, you need to give uh, the voice over NAR voltage mainly relying on the hard keeps transmission. So, you need to ensure 100% the hard is being completed because at the end, if you didn't ensure that, the time will be expired. This will be triggered as lost. It will be counted as a packet loss. So that's why you find that, for example, voice over NAR, Volti, or even video services will have a longer time for that one compared to the data because there is no chance to have a received transmission.